What's going on guys? I'm Brian and today we're talking about memory kits and in particular we're going to be talking about XMP and DOCP settings. We're going to talk about what they are, why you should have them enabled and how to enable them. This works for both Intel and AMD based systems and if you don't care about what they are and why you should have them enabled and you just want them enabled, I will have timestamps directly to the tutorial part in the description box below. Before we get into answering all of those questions, keep in mind that there are always going to be risks associated with messing around in your BIOS. If you can't get your system to boot after you change some stuff or it continues to like boot loop, clear your CMOS and start over. It's easier to clear your CMOS, start over, and then you can just start fresh and figure it out from there. And honestly, as long as you're not cranking up your voltages, your components should be perfectly fine. Also, when in doubt, read your motherboard's manual. If you don't have a physical copy, go check the support page on the motherboard manufacturer's website and you should be able to find a digital copy there. Now, XMP stands for Extreme Memory Profile and DOCP stands for Direct Overclock Profile. And if you didn't get it from the name, these are actually overclocking profiles. And so the advertised speeds of your memory kits are not the default standard like stock speeds for your kit. So when you, you know plug them into your system, you're not going to get what the advertised speeds are unless they are the same as like what the stock speeds would be. And so that's where QVL lists come in. A QVL list is just a list of compatible memory kits for your motherboard in regards to a specific CPU. To find your motherboard's QVL list, just go ahead and Google search the name of your motherboard along with support at the end, and that'll take you to the motherboard's support page. And if you search around the support page, you should be able to find something that hints towards like a mem memory compatibility document of some sort, and that's what you actually want. Now keep in mind, even if your kit doesn't show up on your motherboard's QVL list, it doesn't mean it's not going to work with your motherboard. It simply means that the XMP or DOCV settings may not work as advertised namely you may have to like bump up the voltage loosen your timings or just lower lower the you know clock speed in general to get your kit working faster than the default speeds one last thing on your QVLS before we move on if you search the maximum supported speed that's actually on the QVLS that they've tested and they've confirmed work that'll give you a good idea of what memory um, max what's the maximum memory speeds for your CPU slash motherboard is for example with the b450 tomahawk max msi could only get a 3466 megahertz speed kit running with a 2000 series ryzen chip and so if i get a 3600 megahertz kit there's a good chance i won't even be able to run it completely at its rated speed all right cool so why should you enable it and the simplest answer is performance i did some testing on my test bench and here are some quick results on why you need to have your xmp or docp settings enabled So performance is just straight up better. And quite frankly, if you bought a 3200 megahertz kit, why wouldn't you want that extra performance? And that's really all it comes down to. You should have it enabled because you paid for it and it's gonna improve your system performance. Now to enable these settings, we need to get into the BIOS. And to do this, you're gonna either restart your PC or turn on your PC and start tapping the delete key. So I'm gonna hit power, I'm gonna hit restart real quick. So my PC is gonna start restarting and then I'm gonna start hitting delete once I um, notice that it you know gets right ready to go into the booting process now keep in mind that your bios might look a little different than mine so you may need to read through your motherboard manual to help aid you in finding these same settings I'm about to show you guys here today now once you're in your bios I'm switching over to advanced mode and to get into advanced mode for MSI boards and ASUS boards I'm pretty sure you just hit F7 for gigabyte boards, it hit you hit F2, and then ASRock, I'm pretty sure, just sends you right to like what would be considered their advanced mode. If none of those work, then you'll have to look around in your BIOS or in your manual to find out how to get into that advanced mode. And once we're in that advanced mode, we wanna switch over to overclocking. So we move over to the overclocking tab, and then you wanna scroll down to find DRAM settings, okay? And you can see right here, we're at DRAM settings right now. 
and you're gonna be looking for something that says XMP or DOCP. And right here we see a XMP. And I already have turned my XMP profile on for this computer. And you can see underneath it has profile one and then it has profile two. I have it set to profile one right now, which is 3333 megahertz at 1822, 2242. And it, of course, when it comes to this, we're not really gonna be talking about overclocking here today, but we could also like, you know, fine tune the timings a little bit to get the absolute best speed. Um, but again, that, that would be for another video. If you guys are interested in like an actual memory overclocking video, let me know about that in the comments below. In any case, once you find this setting, you're gonna wanna turn it from disabled to enabled or to like profile one or profile two, depending on the kit that you have, you might have two profiles, you might just have one, but you wanna set it to the profile that you're trying to get it to work with. And then after you're done doing that, go on over to save and exit, hit save changes and reboot, and that's it. You just enabled your XMP or DOCP settings, and it's just about that simple. However, if your system doesn't boot, you might have to do a little bit of troubleshooting. And I'm not gonna go deeply into that here because this video is not a you know memory overclocking guide, but I'm gonna give you guys two quick things you can try to help improve the stability of your kit. So in either case, you're gonna need to get back into your BIOS and restore it to default settings. If you can't get into your BIOS, then you're probably gonna need to clear your CMOS and by doing that, it's gonna restore your BIOS to the default settings and let you re-enter your BIOS. The way I like, to, I prefer to clear my CMOS is by just removing the CMOS battery for a few minutes after I unplug my system. But you can also use like the CMOS jumper or you can use, some other boards have like a clear CMOS button as well. If you're not familiar with any of that, check your manual. Your manual will talk about and show you how to clear CMOS on your particular board. After you are back in your BIOS, the first thing I would recommend that you try is punching in your kit's rated speed as well as its timing and voltages all manually. And the reason why I actually recommend this is because I had a Gigabyte X570 board that the XMP settings, like the just the, the settings itself, when you try to turn it on, when you try to enable XMP, for whatever reason, it would never work. But as soon as I manually punched in all the timings, punched in the you know the speed I wanted to run and the voltage, everything worked perfectly fine. If you go ahead and you punch all those timings in, your voltages and your, your speed in, and it still doesn't work, then what I would then recommend is to kind of slowly up your voltage little by little. So if you start off, you know, you notice it's at 1.35, then maybe try 1.36 volts, see if it boots. If it doesn't, then 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, all the way up to 1.4 volts. Now I would not recommend going over 1.4 volts, so don't go over 1.4 volts. If you can't get it to work from there, then you're gonna want to bring it down your clock speed a little bit. It might be a similar situation as, as this system right here where the 2700, you know, the memory controller just can't handle 3600 megahertz memory. If you guys enjoyed this quick tutorial, please like this video and consider subscribing for more tech content just like this. I wanted to try a little bit of a different format for my tutorials and I really hope to get some solid feedback from you guys on how you like this, this format for a tutorial versus the one I did a few weeks ago on how to lower CPU temperatures. So please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm really, 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 really looking forward to that. If you have any other topics you would like me to cover, also let me know about those as well down there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.